Hi everybody and welcome to Philosophy 180, Logic and Language. I'm Charlie Thomas um, and I'm the instructor for the course. Uh, if you look on our Blackboard page, you'll find an embarrassing video that introduces me to you. Uh, so I won't go through those introductions right now. You'll also find a syllabus for our course, so I'm not going to spend this time talking you through the requirements and expectations. What I do want to do is talk about the first section in our textbook, um, section 1.1, and I want to orient you a little bit to the process of getting ready for your first test. Um, I'll be making several of these videos throughout the course of the semester, um, but I won't be making one for every section. So if you don't see videos for every section of the textbook, don't worry about that. That's not because you're missing something. It's because they're not there. If you have questions about sections, you know, whether there's a video for them or not, um, that's what you should be emailing me about or talking to your group about. Um, there's also a supplemental material section on the Blackboard page, and often um, the, the section that you're having trouble with is a section that other people are having trouble with too, and they will, there will be supplemental materials available to you in that folder. But um, if the textbook and the video lectures and the supplemental materials and your group um, don't give you the answers to things, just contact me. And, um, and I will either upload some more information or we can talk directly about it. Um, but this is uh, chapter 1.1 and I'll talk a little bit about 1.2. There won't be a video on 1.2. Um, um, on the basic terms um, of our course, the basic terms of argument, which um, argument is the central topic of logic. It's what we're going to be concerning ourselves with this semester. Um, so sections 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 really get you into that basic information and I'm going to get you started on that today. Um, now I don't want you to be confused about this structure though because the, the number before the period, the 1.1, the 1 refers to the chapter, right? And then the section numbers are the 0.1 and the 0.2, the 0.3. Your first exam is on chapters 1 through 3, not 1.1 .1 through 1.3, but all the way through uh, chapter 3. So follow your homework assignments. This is just the very tip top of the iceberg in terms of what we're going to do this semester. Last little pep talky note, I guess, before I get into these definitions. Um, the first exam for this class is the easy exam. Um, this is the material that is the least difficult, the least technical, um, the easiest to just take on and master on your own. Um, so uh, if, if you want to be successful in this course, I recommend that you really kill this first exam. The material on the subsequent exams is more technical, it's more difficult, um, and, uh, and it's going to be harder to get a great grade. So uh, get a great grade on this first stuff, hit the ground running, don't wait until after the first test to get serious about the course um, because it's just going get, to gonna get harder. So, so take this stuff on from the start. Okay, so logic. Um, logic uh, operates through argument or concerns itself with argument. Um, and by argument, I don't mean um, kind of having it out with somebody that you disagree with. That's not the kind of argument we're you're talking about. We're talking about um, argument in the sense of statements being presented as support for other states statements. And by support I mean reason to believe. So when you have um, some statements presented um, as reasons to believe some other statement or statements, you have an argument. So everything we're going to be doing um, in this course has to do with argument. Statements being presented um, as reasons to believe or support for other statements. So that immediately suggests the question, what is a statement? Well, it seems kind of obvious. A statement is a sentence, but not all sentences are statements. Um, and in your book, um, so this is just on page two, so the very beginning. Um, in your book, 
you'll see some examples of sentences that aren't statements. Questions like, uh, do you want to go out to dinner tonight? That's a sentence, but it's not a statement. Or um, uh, a, a proposition, um, a, uh, a, a command, uh, go to your room, that I might say to my 11-year-old son. That's a sentence, but it's not a statement. A statement is a special kind of sentence. It's a sentence that has truth value. A statement is a sentence that can be true or false. So when I say that an argument is a set of statements, some of which are offered as reasons to believe others, what I'm saying is we have sentences that have truth value. Sentences that can be true or false, like the cat is gray, or the book is heavy, or the light is bright. These are statements. They're sentences that have truth value. And when you string those together in a particular structure, you get argument. Um, just to push just a little farther in terms of terminology, but not that much farther, um, the, the main kinds of statements within an argument are premises and conclusions. So again, we're working at the very most basic level here, and this stuff's pretty obvious, but if you don't have the basic terminology down, uh, going forward, lots of things fall apart. So within an argument that's made up of statements, some statements are offered as reasons to believe something. They're offered as support. Those statements that are offered as support or reasons to believe are premises. And a lot of time in logic and a lot of the different formal structures that we'll be taking on later in the course, premises will just be designated by a P. Um, in an argument, statements, which again are sentences that have truth value, um, statements for which evidence is offered are conclusions. And you know, you might think that an argument is going to have multiple premises for one conclusion, and that's definitely an option. But sometimes you'll have one premise for multiple conclusions, or multiple premises for multiple conclusions. It, arguments can be constructed in very many ways, as we'll see. But whenever um, a, a statement is offered as support, that statement is a premise. And whenever a statement is being supported, or premises are given as reasons to believe it, that's a conclusion also known uh, by a C. So as we go forward, there are going to be lots of P's and C's floating around. Those are premises and conclusions. All right, so that's really it for the basic terminology in 1.1. This is not rocket science. Like I told you, the first section of this text is pretty straightforward. Um, but let me just say one thing about the next section, 1.2, to put some of this um, into relief. Uh, what you're going to see in the second chapter um, are techniques for recognizing argument. Um, and, uh, and some of that has to do with looking for particular trigger words, um, signaling words. Um, some of it has to do with looking for structure. Um, some of it has to do with recognizing forms that look like arguments but aren't arguments. Um, and I'll let you look at that stuff on your own. You, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll make sense of it. Um, but I did want to mention one of those forms that looks like argument, but isn't really argument, because it helps clarify what argument is. So if you want to uh, look all in the book, um, go to page 21. Um, section 1.2. And by the way, I know that your textbook is an electronic textbook and it's online, but it's precisely the same textbook as I'm looking at right here. Page numbers and everything, it's precisely the same. So whenever I tell you to go to a page, you should be able to do that. So section 1.2, um, uh, page 21, uh, our editor Hurley um, contrasts argument with explanation. So an explanation is something that looks like an argument but isn't an argument. And I, I think the reason I'm going forward to this is I think it'll clarify for you a little bit more what an argument is to see the difference. Um, so in an argument, you have premises 
Here, I'll make a little more room here. You have premises. Remember, we can, that's a terrible P, but that's what that is. Premises, uh, which we can designate with a P, which are offered to support a conclusion. So statements that have truth value that are presented in order to, as to give support or reason to believe other statements which have truth value. Um, in argument, and again this is on page 21, what you want to do with premises and conclusions is you want to move from um, things that are more accepted, accepted facts they have in the book. We can talk about that later um, as we get more deep into this stuff. But whenever you want to convince someone of something, you want to move from what is more accepted or obvious to what is less accepted or obvious. So you start with accepted facts, premises, and you move toward a conclusion which because these premises are accepted and they're offered as support for this statement, the conclusion, you move people toward believing that conclusion, give them reason to believe the conclusion. Explanations work a different way and there's a different terminology for it. Um, in, uh, in explanations, um, you have something that looks like a conclusion, right? Um, the sky turns red at sunset. Um, and then you have things that look like premises um, because the light is filtered uh, through the atmosphere in a way that emphasizes those bandwidths of color. So you have something that looks like a, con uh, a conclusion, but in fact, this is the part of an explanation that's the accepted fact, and that's called an explanandum. Now my handwriting isn't great, and this isn't the ideal way to show you vocabulary, but you have a book. Look on page 21, an explanandum. It looks like a conclusion, um, but it's not a conclusion. It's an explanandum. Why? Because those things that are offered as, that, that, are, that look like the premises, the explanons, right? They look like premises. The sky turns red at sunset because the light is filtered uh, so that it emphasizes those wavelengths. Um, but in an argument, the thing that the becauses are the more accepted facts and they're moving you toward a conclusion. In, uh, in an explanation, the thing that looks like the conclusion is the thing that's the more accepted fact. And you're trying to convince people that these are the reasons why it is as it is. Let that sink in. Watch this video again. I'm just going to say it one more time and then we're going to end this video. An argument. Statements. Statements are sentences that have truth value. Statements that are presented as reasons to believe or support other statements. The statements that are presented as reasons to believe are called premises. The statements that they are presented in order to support, they're called conclusions. That's an argument. Um, one thing, one form that looks a lot like argument but isn't, is an, explana is an explanation. Right? An explanation, you also have statements, but an explanation sort of works in the opposite direction. The thing that looks like the conclusion in an explanation is the thing that's more accepted or obvious. Um, and the things that look like premises are the things that you're trying to convince people of. So in an argument, you move from accepted facts toward a conclusion. In an explanation, you start with an accepted fact and you try to move back toward an explanation. If you can understand that, if you can understand all that terminology, you are ready to move forward.